How's everybody doing? What's up? Please welcome this man to New York. Hi. How you doing? You pretty? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so cute. All right. <laughs> All right. So um, Kendrick's good to have you. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm honored to be on the stage with you because um, you. you're definitely one of the one of the finest lyricists out right now. So I can honestly say that, you know, sincerely. Thank you. All right. So first things first, let's uh, talk about the album a little bit. Right. And explain the title. Uh, Good Kid, Mad City. It's really just a reflection. Um, a lot of people think it's really just, you know, about me, but it's really a reflection on the people I grew up around. You know, a lot of people that they call delinquents, you know, in my city and, you know, the light that always been shed on Compton is this negative place. And um, I just really wanted to put them ills out there and then it really explain, you know, a certain situation in the city. I gather from you, based on your songs and some of the content, you're obviously from this area, South Central, or what was formerly called South Central, but you do have this other side which is introspective and has a certain moral code. Can you speak on that aspect of you? Um, I think that just came from me just being a dreamer, really, you know. Just my personality and, and you know how I think. I always had that that you know um, idea of exploring some more than the city, you know, and always having that, no matter what was going on around me. And I think that just transcended to my music. Can you speak on the uh, the cover art? Yeah, is is interesting. It's a Polaroid right. picture of old school, obviously. Yeah, I could have did anything for my cover. You know, I could have I could have went super flashy. Had a bunch of jewelry on and stuff like that, <laughs> but it it really didn't make sense for me to do that, you know, with what I'm talking about. I always had this premeditated that it was gonna be my album cover for years. I always knew it, you know, because it, it represents so much, you know, not only the household I grew up in, but just um, a lot of people's lives that just came up, you know, in in the ghetto and in, in urban neighborhoods. Who are these people in the? That's my uncle right here. Both of them my uncles. Okay. All the way to the right, that's my grandfather. Granddaddy had the golden flash backstroke every day in Chicago. That's him right there. His name Cadillac. <laughs> okay. Yep. By the way, um, you can pre-order the album right now on your phone. Yeah. So please support this man. Oh, you He's... did it already? Okay, so. Oh. I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> So absolutely pre-order that because yeah. he's um he's neck and neck with DJ Drama right now. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I I, I make no bones about it. I'm I'm into lyrics, man. Right. Like, I can't even lie. And that's one of the first things that uh, gravitated me to your music was um, lyrics. Can you uh -huh. speak on your process lyrically and 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 why you rap the way you rap? Man, um, I think it just started with just having passion for it too. Just like you have, you know. I grew up listening to you know, pop. DMX, Jay Z, you know Nas, and that intrigued me. The things they were saying, the way they flipped their words, M, um, yeah, flow, all that. That's what I like. That's what I like. And I think you know, once I started doing music, you know, it transcended to me doing the same thing. You know. Have you ever been tempted to dumb it down and and and? Oh yeah, definitely. Early in my career, when I really didn't have my niche and didn't know what I wanted to do, or you know, a specific sound, that came with trial and error. You know, just me figuring out um, what I want to talk about. I never had this, you know, same content. I can't say I have. You know, when I first started off, I was just rapping everywhere. Anything that sounded great, whatever sounded on the radio, whatever sounded on the mixtape, I was doing it. Who are some of your influences? Influences. Um, it can range from, like I said, the whole West Coast, truthfully, the whole West Coast. Um, I really had to double back. When I started writing my own rhymes and started listening to East Coast cats, I, had, I was late on Jay-Z. The West Coast was late on Jay-Z. The West Coast was late on Big. You know, so I went back and I was like, man, I studied all them cats. I was like, oh, so this is what everybody was talking about. You know, so it plays a big part, you know, from the East to the West. Well, when you're, um, you know, out and about, you know, like, what's the craziest experience you've had? I know you're touring rigorously. Yeah. Uh, just meeting these people, man. Yeah. Real talk. You know? Yeah. It'd be, the, it'd be like surreal moments, you know, because, you know, I look in the mirror every day and I'm the same person. Yeah. So when I walk out in these streets and these people see me as, you know, Kendrick Lamar, you know, as a rapper, it's, it's, it's kind of weird to me because I'm just a regular person like everybody else. And um, these people look at me in a different light, 
you know, so that's that right there is just weird to me already. So if I get a person walking down the street and then they break down and be crying, you know, and explaining how much this this song saved their life, that's a surreal moment. Speak on your crew a little bit, and yeah. and, and you guys have a, like a real true movement, right? Which I find interesting because usually the real true movements at this time are generally older, older guys. Yeah. You know. Can you speak on? Um. Yeah, my crew: Black Hippie, J Rock, Ab Soul, Schoolboy Q. Yeah. Um. It's really just you know, it's bigger than just the music. You know, a lot of people just look at it as you know music, as songs, and we've been on songs with each other. It's way bigger than that, you know. It's it's a it's a lifestyle that we lead, you know, just for a new generation, you know, that we started in our own community, knowing they needed somebody to look up to, rather than just going to, you know, the easy way out, you know, with the streets. Anybody can do that. Do you feel this is an offshoot of some of the? Mm, I don't know. I know it's. I don't know how to really regard it as, but you know, there's like. The uh, the guys that do the dancing and everything is this any in any way related to that like oh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying what like you mean? <laughs> what I mean is and I don't mean that disrespectfully what I mean is gangster rap is what most people consider yeah. L A Compton yeah. South Central and then there's like what I can't even think of their names yeah. now you know what I'm saying I know what you're saying um, the, the um, jerk boys yeah exactly uh -oh. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, that's that's all a part of the culture. You yeah. know, that's all of the part of the culture. I mean, people have been dancing for many moons since yeah. the early stages of hip hop, you know, so that'd never leave the culture in hip hop. Um, as far as gangster rap, LA, that's something we can never run from. I can't run from it. You know, when you listen to Good Kid Mad City, you'll understand that, you know, that's that's me. But that's some you know, you, you can't escape as an LA, you know, artist or a West Coast cat. And um the thing about it, you know, you getting these kids now that want to tell their story a little bit different. So now, what we once known as just gangster rap, it's, it's transcending, you know, to a universal scale. So you'll hear different type of instruments. You'll hear different bounces on the beat, but it still had that same flow. And that's the type of elements we bring into the game. Who's going to be on the album? Um, on the album right now, did y'all see the track listen? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> um, I kept everything real sweet. I really didn't want any features on the album. Mm -hmm. I really didn't. I really wanted to keep it. I don't know. It's like so personal. Like I don't like to force records and, 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 and features. You know, um, I didn't want to force anything. You know, it had to be organic. So Section 80, I had Ab Soul and School, Schoolboy Q on the album. I didn't have no J-Rock because the J-Rock record didn't come off organic and it didn't fit into the realm. Now, this debut, I have J-Rock and no Absol Schoolboy Q. You get know what I'm saying? It has to feel right. You know, we did a bunch of records, but when I come down and I break down these songs, and everybody know I'm super cohesive when it comes to putting a project together, everything just has to feel right, you know? And that's, that's my whole process mm, on, on doing that. Now, um, it hasn't aired yet, but last week in the BET Awards yeah. were uh, tapes in Atlanta, and you won an award. Can you speak on the award? I wasn't even there, so oh, yeah. I don't even know what you won. Oh, yeah, they did that for me, these <laughs> people right here, Lyricists of the Year. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. Is that the one where they, they downloaded the app, and then they had to vote? Is that yeah, yeah. Uh, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> How's um, that feel? Jay-Z, Nas, Kanye West, my homeboy J. Cole. That's, that's a, a great feeling yeah. to know that people actually recognize that, you know, I take this art serious. It's not just me trying to get it for the quick dollar. I put in a lot of years and a lot of grind, and uh, as well as them artists did too, you know. Of course, you know, Jay-Z, come on, you know the accolades he has, Nas, Kanye. And um, for them to acknowledge that a young cat is doing the same thing, you know, because a lot of times people look at the TV and they, you know, feel like, okay, um, he got money, you know, and he ain't really tripping or stuff like that. No, nah, these people really have to grind to get, like, you don't know, understand the things that Jay-Z and, and Nas and Cole, you know, had to get through, you know, a whole lot of sacrifice and time and, and, and pressure, you know, so for y'all to acknowledge that, I really appreciate that from y'all, real talk. Absolutely. Now, one thing I wanted to ask you, and this is really a, a real true question for the whole entire mm -hmm. like younger generation, because 
you do put in so much work and you do release so much free material. How much pressure does that put on you when your actual commercial release comes out? You've released all this classic yeah. material to the people and now... Man, you know that's crazy. That's something I never really had to worry about just off the fact the people that have been down with me, they so dedicated and believe in this movement so much. Man, they they go out their way, you know, just to make sure that, you know, this this plan stay alive. So if I put out 100 records before this album, it probably wouldn't even matter. They'd still go out and, and support, you know, just to keep this feeling, you know, on, on a pedestal. And um, you have to be aware that, you know, you never want to oversaturate, you know, the market. At least I don't. You know, I always want people to, to want it, you know. Um, my standard album is, is 12 tracks. It's 12 tracks of my life. I didn't even want to go over that. I didn't even want to do the actual bonuses, you know. And I know y'all want the bonuses, and they're very, they're great songs, you know, and they still fit in that bulk. But I really wanted that that 12 and that, that sequence because the story is just um, so defined, you know, once you hear it, it'll catch just like that, you know. But, um, yeah. You have to you have to be aware of that oversaturating yourself. So when when you're not writing and you're not touring and you're just in your space, what do you do to unwind? What it, what gets you? What do you do just in your free time? Man, I watch a lot of Martin. <laughs> yeah. A lot of Martin. Yeah, so much Martin. So many comedies. So many Fridays. <laughs> Friday <laughs> at the next. Yeah. A lot of yeah. If anybody ever been around, you just. Us, you know, as a family, Black Hippie or CDE, we do a lot of, a lot of rude jokes and, and pranks on each other. I'm sure y'all probably see it on Twitter and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, it's quite blunt. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, um, that's 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 my energy. It's just you know, feeling good around my people. You know, whether it's close friends like, you know, TDE and his family. You know, that's how I unwind. Do you, what weird places do you get inspiration from, uh, other than music? Weird place, I'm mad with <laughs> other than music. Um, you know, what you mean as far as like location yeah, or? No, like TV, um, show, you, you know, you mentioned Martin, but I don't know if that ever. You know, I get a lot of inspiration just sitting in my mom's kitchen for some a small little kitchen. Really? And just sitting down and just reflecting and, you know, looking at different things that I grew up around, you know, that same refrigerator, that same stove, and just reflecting on that, see how far I came and stuff like that. Okay, yeah. all right, all right. I think we're about ready for some questions for the yeah. audience. I know that um, you guys have a lot. Uh -huh. Over here, check on the far right. Okay. Yeah. I, I, got, I got a question. Damn, uh -huh. that's how I sound? Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's very unique right there, what you just did, because when I first recorded my first song, I said the same thing. But I was addicted. I don't know if you like the way you sound. Or <laughs> <laughs> I kept doing it over and over. Nah, I, I'll get over it. But <laughs> like listening to you, like listening to you do features with Schoolboy Q, Absol, yeah. everybody, basically, like who do you like really? Who do Kendrick Lamar want to work with? Who do I want to work with? Yeah. Man, other than my crew, man, it's tough. Um, I don't do too many features. Like this year, I really stepped out the box and did a, did a couple of them. Yeah, but other than my crew, I think my crew the best, truthfully. Yeah. Cutest little girl in the front. Uh, um, what inspired you to do this album? What inspired me? That's a great question. Um, really sticking to the plan. Inspired what inspired me? Sticking to the plan of, of keeping it true to what I came, what I wanted to do from the beginning. That's um shine a different light on my city. Um, Compton got so much negativity and, you know, like we, we, we're not capable of anything else. And I felt like music was, you know, a positive light coming out of the city. So me sharing that and, and explaining the story to the youth, you know, let them know that I come from this place and you still can touch me. And, you know, it ups the notch as far as people want to do something better. We got another question all the way in the back, back here in the standing room, red sweater. Oh. What's up, Kendrick, right here. What's that, man? Um, after you release your album, are you gonna finish that project with J. Cole? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> he said, yeah. 
That was the whole that was the whole point. Me and Cole sat down, we was recording last week. Um and the whole plan was, you know, get this get this album off the ground. You know, it's a whole lot of lot of anticipation, a lot of momentum. And um once we break that, then we're going back in. Thank you. Thank you. Next question in the front row. What's up, man? How you um doing? About a year ago when you were out in L.A., when Snoop came out and said he was passing the torch, you could see, like, in the video, it caught you up a little bit. Was, yeah. that, at, was that a real point in your career where you felt like, all right, like, I'm here, and that's what yeah. the pressure's on? or Not really the pressure on, just more excitement. You know, it's a real moment. You know, you work so hard. And I, I keep saying that the work, man, so much work behind it, like, and um, sometimes I feel like you know the listeners take that take that for granted because they don't never see that, they don't see how we sat in a twelve passenger van with fourteen cats and followed game tour bus all the way from L. A. to Rhode Island for two months. They don't understand that. They don't see that. And um, they don't see the struggles of going to these label meetings, knocking on these doors, and you know, jeopardizing you know your dignity to make this certain type of record and then the hardships and you having no job because you want to make studio time and you paying for studio time and you just want somebody to listen. They don't understand that. So that moment right there was all them emotions coming out, you know, on, on, on stage, you know, from the hurt, you know, and the struggle that my family been through, the ones I lost, the ones that want to see me make it, but, you know, didn't get to see that moment. All that came out on that very stage. Yeah. Next question is going to be all the way in the back over here on your right. Hey, Kendrick. How you doing? I'm good. You had me hooked at Section 80. I can't lie. Thank you. Um, and I noticed on that album there's a heavy jazz influence. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about how jazz has, I guess, become a part or how that intertwined with the story of Section 80? You know, I didn't, I didn't really know how much of an influence I had until, you know, I started going with actually picking the instrumentals and, and the beats that, you know, my camp was putting together. And um, most of the joints just had that soulful feel. And I think that just come from a household, you know, where my parents played nothing but oldies and gangster rap, you know. And, and, and intertwined well, you know, when you think of records like Let Me Ride, Dre, you know, he was sampling, you know, some of the coldest oldies, you know, and them playing Marvin Gaye and Isley Brothers, that helped a lot as well. So. That's why you hear a lot of soul and a lot of, you know, jazz influence references in my music. That's just the feel. That's what I like. And you will hear, hear that same influence on this album. Second row right in front of you. Hi, my name is Ayana. How you doing? Um, I just wanted to ask you, you were talking about how you started rapping when you were like 13. Mm -hmm. But now you're rapping about completely different stuff that I feel like you probably were rapping out when you were younger. Like, uh -huh. I just want to know, like, what could have happened that your mind just changed? Because the stuff that you rap about is so real that yeah. it's, it's, like, it's amazing. Man, 13, man, I probably, I was just rapping about killing people. <laughs> I rap about, I probably killed probably 100 people <laughs> in one verse. Probably sold so many narcotics in one verse. Because that's, I mean, that's all we've seen. That's all, you know, that was around us at the time. And we felt like, you know, the city relate to that, you know, and that's it. And um, as I matured, man, I found out, you know, there's so much more, you know, I could speak on. And I, I never knew that. I thought I also will stay in that one realm, you know. And um, it just came with me just uh, maturing as an adult and knowing the responsibilities, you know, that I had, you know, as far as people listening to me. Once I knew that the music wasn't just for me, that's when everything else changed. Next question is going to be over over to your right in the third row. What's up, Kendrick? What's going on? Yeah, um, I just wanted to say Section 80, it really changed like everything that I look at, like uh -huh. a whole different type of way. I just wanted to ask you, what message were you trying to bring out in the Ronald Reagan era track? The Ronald Reagan era. Um, yeah, that's one of my favorite tracks. It's mine too. Thank you. You know, when you have records like F Your Ethnicity, that was more of a um, a positive record, you know, saying what we could be, you know, as a generation of uh, respecting, you know, each other's, you know, race and, and, and identity, positive. On side B, I always want to give the ills, you know, and that's what made Section 80 so dope to me, 
you know, so Ronald Reagan, that was just the aggression, you know, of, of you know, where we at in this day and age. You know what I'm saying? So it almost plays back, you know, as a rerun factor. And um, that was really, I was just really giving the ills, you know, where I come from and what everybody else was experiencing. It was just all energy. How come they, they get to ask all the good questions? <laughs> Third row. How are you? How you doing? Um, you say how you are so heavily influenced by both the West and East Coast. Uh -huh. Do you have any personal favorite tracks, like anything that you've done on any of your albums, any of your mixtapes? Like, what's your personal favorite song that you've done? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, Ronald Reagan was definitely one of them, just off the fact that um, particular track, I was inspired by listening to this one RZA joint, you know, just been in... Been a fan of ODB, you know. I always said if I got a particular track like that, I would want ODB on it. You know, I always planned that. That was premeditated too, and I finally came across that track that Tabies did, you know. But fortunately, uh, ODB, you know, he's resting, and um, that was one of my favorite joints. Just off the fact, the influence of where it came from, just the whole Wu Tang feel. Um, that record, Average Drill, on OD. Because it had that West Coast kind of vibe and that bounce, and it, and it was melodic. And um, what I think I did with this new album was learn from Section 80 and learn from OD and what I want to blend across, you know, melodies and raw raps. Yep. Thank you. Next one's going to be right in the front row, right here to your right. Oh. <laughs> she put her hand up. Oh, um, hi, Kendrick. How you doing? Who we at? Right here. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, my name's Jade, and I want to know, like, in a number of lines you've mentioned, like, being compared to Tupac, like, personally, how do you feel being compared to him? I mean, it's a great, it's an honor, you know, for people to compare our content, but it'll only be one Pac. It'll only be one Pac. I'll never be able to fill them shoes. All I can do is try to continue, you know, the spark that he started, you know, um, and journey on my path, you know, as Kendrick Lamar, and make my statement. Yeah, thank you. Your next question is going to be all the way in the back over here on the right side again. Hi, Kendrick. Where? Right here. Right here. Okay. Okay. So, um, I, you were saying you have a list of tracks and bonus tracks as well. What's mm -hmm. one thing that you didn't get to include on Good Kid, Mad City that you wanted to? That I didn't get to include, man. Um, that's a great question. Mm. I'd be giving away the album if I told you that though. <laughs> it's um it's one particular piece, it's not a song that's in the album that I didn't get to include because like what I just learned from this album is the business side. Like I had so many records recorded, and I thought I was going, you know, have them all on there and stuff. But I had to get these samples cleared, you know. So it was one particular record, one of my favorite records, that I didn't get to put on there, you know. And what made it so dramatic was the piece that was with it, you know, behind the record. Yeah. All the way in the back to the left. Um, pound for pound, compared to like the greats, and who doing it right now. Um, what do you think sets you apart as an artist? Um, what sets me apart, one of my main niches, I think it's a really a God gift of just connecting with y'all. Like, it's nothing that I try to do, you know, overly, you no know, purpose. It's just something that comes out on record. You know, when I do a song called Faith, that's, that's really me. That's really, you know, my story. When I do an album called Good Kid, Mad City, that's really me. That's really my story. That's not something I'm trying to be or trying to do. I said I need to do this album in order to move on with my life. You know, so when it play back and you hear it and you know you went through the same, you know, motions that I went through, that's God given right there. That's something that I can't explain or try to teach somebody how to do because nobody taught me how to do it. I had to learn and then grow into that, you know. Next one's going to be all the way in the back on your right over here, and then we're going to start rolling forward again. Hey, Kendrick. Uh, 
Love Section 80, still listen to it every day. Appreciate it. One of the it. most influential, album, uh, influential albums I've ever heard. Thank you. And the uh, one main track in general that every single time I listen to it, it gives me goosebumps is Keisha's song. Yeah. Uh, and at the end, you talk about you played it for your sister when she was 11. Right. I just wanted to hear what was her response to that song. Um, she didn't really get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she didn't really get it. She, you know, she comprehended, you know, and she, she respect me and said, okay, I understand. But I know she didn't really get it because she still, she has to, you know, grow into that. And, and, you know, all I can do is really tell, you know, I never want to preach to nobody. I'm just going to put it in the air, just like my pops put it in the air on me. And you go out there and do what you do, you know, and see what happens. And I did what I did. I seen what happened. And I made a decision, you know. So once I gave her the game and threw it in the air, you know, she can either take it, you know, or leave it. But at the end of the day, she definitely going to have to make a decision and a choice. In the back again to the left. I love you. Oh, I love you, too. <laughs> um... I want to ask you, I have a um, project on you. I'm doing a project on you. I picked your cover, Section 80. Right. And you put a Bible in a gun clip. In yeah. The, I wanted to know why exactly did you put those two items in the same picture, right. such negative and then yeah. such positive? It's taboos of the world, you know. People will feel that, you know, I got a lot of criticism on that album cover, matter of fact. Same way I got with this, you know. And, um... My whole thing on, you know, the condoms and the, and the Bible next to the, um, I mean, the, the gun clip and the condoms next to the Bible, people think that you're supposed to have just, you know, if you have a Bible, it's supposed to be some holy water on the side of it, right? That's a person that's already, you know, saved and, and living his life, freedom. I'm not speaking on them. They're good. I'm speaking on a person that's looking at this clip you just put on the drawer. These condoms, a woman's lipstick, and sees this Bible, showing that he's still a human being, but he's trying to find himself at the same time. You dig what I'm saying? That was the whole point. Beautiful. Beautiful. Right. We got another question to your right, all the way in the back, on this side, over here to your right. There you are. Yeah, I have a whole playlist of just Black Hippie, uh. and uh, I listen to all you guys, and I was just wondering uh, if you think in the future, if there would ever be another artist to join the group? Another artist Travis to join Gambino, the group? Travis Gambino, hint, hint. <laughs> Said no. The artists that join the group, if I could think of somebody right now on top of my head, it'd probably be Danny Brown. I like that. <laughs> Danny Brown is wild. But he spits crazy. <laughs> He's crazy. In the yeah. back again. Hello. How you doing? The way you just explained your cover mm -hmm. and the syntax of your raps, right. um, are there any books that influence you? Because you've just explained really great conflict. So right. any books that influence the way you rap and the things that you say in your flow? You know, it's crazy. That's the irony about it. Um, most of my knowledge and my work, I'll break it down to you like this. In seventh grade, um, one of my teachers, he asked me, say, you know, why you not, you know, communicating with people outside, you know, your, your, your race? And, you know, it's a minority where I'm from, you know, it's Latinos and, and, and blacks. And uh, he was like, I, I was like, I don't know. And I'm comfortable around, you know, my people. This, this, you know. <laughs> We in the city, and and this time a, a a race war was going on, and he was like, "Man, don't you understand? You know, by not looking down on the next person with the next color, that's how you uh, you know gain information on life in general more than anything you can ever you know imagine." He said, "The day you stop being scared to touch people and, and talk to people, that's the day your mind will open up to so many things." You know, and he was looking at that from a standpoint where he'd give me a book and I'd just sit on the table and not even, you know, focus on reading it. And he was like, why you do that? He was like, I don't know. I was like, I don't know. He said, and the day you open up that book and you, and you read more, as well as talk to different people in the world, that's when you sit yourself far behind anybody else. 
So I try to imply what I learned in seventh grade, even this to this day, you know, as far as opening up books and, and reading more, because it put me in a mind state where I could make a record called Section 80 and Good Kid, Mad City, where people can understand it. Next question's on the opposite side over here, right in the front row on the right-hand side. Hi, Kendrick. My name is Sablay. How you doing? Um, my favorite song of yours is The Heart Part 2, and I know toward the end it's yeah. like you got cut off. Um, can you explain your process of spitting that? And, like, was there... The, the stuff that you had more to say, do you feel like you released it in your other songs? Yeah. Heart Part 2, Heart Part 1 and 2, that was just me going in the booth and just rapping. You know, I do that. Um... I do that in most of my music, music that's have a lot of emotion. I don't really want to write it down because I'm confined to looking at the, you know, the lines on the paper rather than just getting it out. So record like the hard part too, I'm going in the booth and I'm just thinking of vibes and, and, and thinking of flows and, you know, pulling from that energy until I can't go no more. And that's what happened, you know, at the end. We have time for two more questions in the okay. back to the left. Hey Kendrick, um, huge fan of you. Thank you. Uh, really excited for a Good Kid, Mad City. I was just wondering, what does the M A A D stand for, uh -oh. and why did you capitalize the two A's? They'd be mad if I just told you and had them waiting all this time. All right, they can go. <laughs> I mean, you could just tell me. Um, you'll catch it in now. It's a particular song. You'll catch it. It's very subtle, though. It's very subtle. So what? I mean, I on, can't just tell us. No, I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> we got one more for you over here on the opposite side in the second row. Uh, Hi. Um, like everyone else, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you First and foremost, you're a lyricist. I want to know, um, at what point in time, or was there someone that indicated that you were a vocalist? A lot of, from K-Dot to the mm -hmm. Section 80 until, like, you're, you know, you're just, you're randomly released tracks. Right. You started using your voice as an instrument, and that yeah. was really, really influential, and it had a lot to do with y the sound and right. defining your sound. So where did that come from? Was there an influence? What, yeah. At what point did you recognize it? Um, that comes from years just being in the studio. Years just being in the studio and doing something different and, and being original. You listen to my tracks, I never want to sound, you know, with the same, you know, emotion or the same aggression. I don't want to be monotone like that. Um, I always want to, you know, switch it up but still be me and still, you know, please the ear as far as, you know, what I'm saying on the instrumental. And um, that's something I, I learned to grow with. Okay, so that's it. Can you please give this man Kendrick Lamar Thank a round God. of applause? Appreciate it. Please, please remember, Good City Mad, I mean, Good Kid Mad City, yes, pardon sir. me, is available on iTunes right now for pre order. Yeah. Please go out and get it. You can get it right now on your iPhone. And I really appreciate y'all, man, because this album is not even out, and y'all making it hit number one on iTunes just because y'all believe that much. That's, that's, that's real love.